Hey YouTube, how's it going? Yap Science here with another OCHEM video. Uh, the topic today will be worked examples of reactions with alcohols. Previous video we talked about the concepts behind reactions with alcohols, what to look for, what to expect. Uh, so these are just this video is just dedicated to problem solving. Okay, so I encourage you to pause the video uh, before I go into solving it and press play when you're ready to see the answer. Okay, by the way, just real quick. Uh, shout out to my friend Machi for getting me this t-shirt. It says never trust an atom. They make up everything. So thank you Let's take a look at the first problem We're gonna react it with first NaH in the presence of DMF Okay Polar acrotic solvent and second we're gonna introduce an alkyl halide Okay, let's see what happened Remember, NaH is a deprotonating hydride source, so let's draw that hydride right here. Hydrogen with a minus charge, it's going to deprotonate that hydrogen right here off of the alcohol. Send those electrons over to oxygen. Double arrows because it's acid-base chemistry, right? And now we just made an alcohol into a good nucleophile because we have oxygen with a full negative charge, full negative formal charge. Okay. And remember, in the previous video, we talked about that being one of two ways we can make an alcohol into a reactive species, right? One is making it a good nucleophile, the other is making it a good leaving group. Those are the two you're primarily responsible in OCHEM. So here we made it a good nucleophile. What can happen now is it can attack this alkyl halide in an SN2 reaction. And that's exactly what happens, right? Draw out our alkyl halide, oxygen attacks the electrophilic carbon, shoots the leaving group off, and now we can go to our final products, right? We have our cyclohexane ring, we have our oxygen, and now we have one, two, three carbons attached. One, two, three carbons attached, okay? Hope you got that, wasn't too bad. Let's take a look at another example, okay? We have this cyclopentane ring, we have a dashed OH coming off and a wedged BR coming off, okay? So in your head, you should be thinking intramolecular reaction, right? We see an alcohol and we see a leading group, but that's thinking a little ahead, so no worries if you didn't get that. And again, let's react it with some NaH and DMF, right? Polar aprotic solvent. Now, once again, this hydride source is going to deprotonate the alcohol. I promise we're going to get into cases that don't involve NaH. It's just really important concept to know. Okay, it's going to deprotonate this hydrogen right here, send those electrons off to oxygen, and now, double arrows, we've created a good nucleophile, right? So now we have O minus, and we have our Br here. And remember, intramolecular reactions happen typically faster than intermolecular reactions, right? So even if I did the teacher might, you know, put in a second reactant here to confuse you. The major product will be the intramolecular because they're, they're spatially, right? They're closer together. So intramolecular is typically faster, right? It happens more frequently. So this oxygen right here will come and attack this electrophilic carbon, shoot that bromine off. And remember, inversion of stereochemistry, extremely important, right? For an SN2 reaction, you have inversion of stereochemistry. So what we have is this. We have a cyclopentane, right? Just like we started with. But now... We have uh, dashed here and dashed here, right? Inversion at the, uh, at the uh, site of attack. Okay, let's react this with some NaH and DMF. Right, NaH will deprotonate this oxygen. So that'll give us oxygen with a negative formal charge. And now we have an electrophilic carbon with a good leaving group attached, right? So the oxygen will attack. And this time the intramolecular reaction will form uh, a closed ring, right? A new closed ring. So let's go straight to the products. Remember inversion of stereochemistry. Now, when it comes to this, it can be a little confusing to visualize. So I usually like to number my carbons. Let's call this carbon one, two, three, four and five. So we see that the oxygen attacks at carbon number two. So we're going to have a five membered ring total, one, two, three, four carbons and an oxygen and a methyl sticking out. Okay. So let's draw that. 
We have our oxygen, one, two, three, four carbons. And our methyl is sticking off of carbon number two, which is right here. But remember, uh, inversion of stereochemistry, the methyl will be dashed. Now, it, it's not really a reliable method to just say wedge always becomes dash, dash always becomes wedge. You have to check for R or S, right? Because when you're forming a ring, things are moving in space. You can't just assume that this becomes a dash. In this case, it does. There are examples where it won't. And what you really have to do is just do the R or S assigning. So we could do that real quick if you want, right? Here are the hydrogens in the back. So priority number one, two, three. That would be a uh, counterclockwise. Okay, so this is S, which means this one better be R, right? And it is in this case. Okay, so this is the right answer. Let's move on. Okay, so let's say we have this cyclopentane molecule, right? A wedged OH sticking out and then a methyl over there. I promise we're done with NaH, okay? No more NaH. <laughs> I know you're probably getting tired of that. So let's react this with HBr, right? This was the second method we learned in the previous video of how to make alcohols more reactive. Previously with NaH, we made an alcohol into a good nucleophile, right? And then it attacks something. Here, we're gonna make it into a good leaving group by protonating it. HBr, strong acid. So what's gonna happen? OH will deprotonate that HBr, right? So let's draw that. Oxygen will grab this hydrogen, send those electrons over to bromine. Oxygen with three bonds, right? Plus one formal charge. Now here's the key to this problem. Most people will say, okay, now we have Br minus floating in solution. Let's just attack the electrophilic site and kick this guy off. Remember the rule we learned in the previous video. For a secondary alcohol using acid, SN1 will happen, not SN2. Okay, if this were primary, we could attack directly with the Br minus. Since it's secondary, we have to first have the leaving group leave, like in any SN1 reaction. So leaving group leaves, forms a carbocation. Look for rearrangement, there's no possible rearrangement. So we have a carbocation right here. Okay, this is good SN1 review. Carbocation right there, Br minus will now attack at the carbocation site and form our products. Now, why do I say products in plural? Remember, for SN1, we have a racemic mixture. So we'll, we'll get products that have inversion of stereochem and we'll have products that have retention of stereochemistry. Remember that, SN1, uh, you get a racemic mixture. So one of our products will have a wedged BR and another product will have a dashed BR. So one of them will be R, one of them will be S configurations, okay? So let's react this alcohol with first TSCl, and then let's introduce LiAlH4. Remember that from the reduction video? It's a reducing agent, okay? We'll see how that plays out. First things first, tosyl chloride, right? It converts any alcohol into tosylate, which is a very good leaving group. We don't really have to know the mechanism for it. Most OCHEM courses don't require it. So we have OTS right here hanging around. Now we have a source of hydride, right? We'll attack the electrophilic carbon, send OTS over. And our product is just our cyclopentane with a methyl, right? That was a CH2 and an OTS. It gained a hydrogen, now it's just CH3, okay? So now let's take this molecule and react it with PBr3, right? Going back to the previous video, we learned about PBr3. The solvent is CH2Cl2, okay? And remember, this is a secondary alcohol. If we're dealing with acids, we would have to treat this as SN1, but PBr3 is special, right? We don't have to do SN1, we're gonna do SN2. First though, we have to make this into a good leaving group as always. So what's gonna happen is we have our PBr3, now this oxygen will grab that PBr3 as one bromine leaves, right? That'll form oxygen attached to a hydrogen and a PBr2, right? Because one of the bromines left. Oxygen gets a positive charge. Let's not forget our methyl. Now it's a good leaving group. We have Br- floating around in solution. It's going to attack at the electrophilic site. Kick off the good leaving group. 
and give us our answer. And there you go, a bromine replaced an alcohol. Okay, last problem. This is going to be tricky, and I purposely included this one because I think it really, really includes a lot of principles that you know combine SN1 and rearrangement. So if you could do this problem, I'd say you're in really good shape, okay? Here we go. Okay, we're gonna react this molecule with some HBr. It's an acid, right? So in order to make this a good leaving group, oxygen will deprotonate the acid. And now we have a good leaving group, right? So far, so good. Oxygen with three bonds. Now, we said that for secondary alcohols and acid, we have to treat it as an SN1. So can we just have this leave and form the carbocation? Sure, we could. But there's an even better uh, thing to consider and that is this hidden hydrogen right here, right? If we move that hydrogen over there, we can make a tertiary carbocation. So that's exactly what we're gonna do. We're gonna move this hydrogen right over here as uh, OH2 leaves as water, okay? And now let's see what that looks like. We'll have a carbocation, tertiary carbocation right there. Our Br- is hanging around in solution. It'll attack at the carbocation site. And then our final product will look like this. Okay. Hope that was okay. So thanks so much for watching. Uh, these were work examples of alcohols, and I really hope you gained something from that.